Aloha everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Kimo and I'm going to be showing you today some really cool ways to do some modern wall art for super cheap using this frame from Ikea. So let me tell you a little bit about this frame. So this is the Hofsta Ikea frame and we're gonna disassemble it. So on the back, you see those little metal tabs. I'm just gonna use a butter knife to lift those tabs away and pull out this hardboard backing. From there, you'll see that there are, in typical Ikea fashion, a set of instructions on how to adjust the depth of the frame, which could come in handy. And after that, we see the actual mat of uh, that's included in the frame. I'm gonna lift that away. There is a nice beveled edge on the inside edge of that mat. And after the mat, you'll see this plexiglass portion here. And in other frames, like the Riba IKEA frame, there's actual glass, but on this one, it's plexiglass, which means it's flexible. And on the plexiglass itself, you have this protective covering. Actually, there's two, one on each side, and we're just removing those protective layers off of that plexiglass. One thing I really like about this Hofsta frame is this little inner frame, if you will, that you can use to adjust the depth of your piece. I found this Pottery Barn piece for $99 on their website, and I'm gonna pull this off uh, with a similar look for about $10.50, and that includes the cost of the IKEA frame. So for this project, I'm gonna use some cardstock, some stickers from Dollar Tree, and a page out of this songbook. Now, like you, I absolutely love Pottery Barn, but I don't like their prices. I think that in so many cases, there are so many items that are beautiful, but really kind of expensive. And that's the case with their wall art as well. So my goal here is to reproduce something that maybe isn't a complete dupe, but will definitely be inspired by this Pottery Barn wall art. So as you can see, I'm taking this glue stick and I'm gluing down that sheet of uh, that music paper from the songbook. Then after that, I'm simply going to choose one of the stickers on our Dollar Tree sticker set here. And I like the one with the orange on it. Uh, kind of reminds me of some succulents and seems very springy at the same time. So we're just gonna take that off, center it on our page and smack it down. Now from here, we just need to stick it back into the frame. So before we do that, I'm gonna take some of this painter's tape to adhere this piece to the mat. So I'm gonna carefully take that mat, position it over our piece, and then um, lay it down. And on the back side of that, I'm gonna add a couple more pieces of painter's tape just to make sure that we hold it in place. And now we're gonna stick our art into our Ikea frame. Let's make sure it's the right way. There we go. The first thing we're gonna do is to position our plexiglass, uh, put it back into the frame. That's our first step. And then we're gonna add our piece of art that we just completed, face down, of course, followed by this hardboard backing. And we'll just make sure that those metal tabs on the perimeter of the frame are all folded back down. With the hanging hardware that already comes attached to the frame, you could hang it either portrait or landscape style. And here's our final result. Now, while I chose to use a page uh, from a music book for the backing here, you could certainly use a page from, say, an encyclopedia or a scientific text. And same thing goes for the sticker. You could use the sticker to really personalize this piece of art so that it says something about who you are. So this video today is part of the Chic for Cheap challenge that's hosted by my friend Christy from her channel Christy Creates and the very talented The Crafty Quinn. I really encourage you to go check out their channels. I've got links to them in my description box below as well as a link to the playlist where you'll find the videos from all the other makers who are also participating in this challenge. So please go ahead and check them out. Show them some love and support and let them know that Chemocraft sent ya. My Pottery Barn inspiration for this project is this $169 textile that has kind of a tribal feel. 
Now, I was at Dollar Tree and didn't find anything that looked exactly like it was tribal, but I did find this really cool tote bag, which in my opinion is kind of a textile, and we're going to lay our cardstock over that bag just to act as a template, and then we're gonna cut out that shape from the bag. I wanted to take a quick second to say thank you, thank you so much to everybody who is watching this video and especially if you're a subscriber, your support means so much to me and I can't thank you enough. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you enjoy my content so far and I'll see you in some future DIY, arts and crafts, entertainment and other videos in the future. Now we are gluing down our little piece of textile to our cardstock using a glue stick here. And I thought that it would add the cardstock just to give it a little bit more backing. So hopefully that it would be easier to assemble inside of that Ikea frame. And as before, I just attached it to the mat of the frame using some painter's tape. And here's our final result. For this project, you can use just about whatever textile you want. Maybe it's a pillowcase, maybe it's a favorite t-shirt with your favorite band on it, or maybe it's a placemat. There are so many examples of textiles out there that make beautiful and cheap wall art. My Pottery Barn inspiration for this project was $99 and it kind of reads like pop art to me. And so what I'm going to do is to take a page out of this photo book that I have of James Dean. Uh, these are all black and white photos. They definitely read vintage. And I am struck by this particular page right here with this photo. So I'm going to take my frame or I should say my mat from the Ikea frame and position it over that picture just to see how it might look inside of the mat. And after removing that picture, we're just going to trim it down to size. I love using old vintage photographs, and especially if you've got a photo book like this, what you could consider doing is to line an entire wall of pictures just like this that you just uh, cut out of a photo book. For this particular project though, I'm also going to add a little pop of color by cutting out this little rectangle from tissue paper that again, I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm just experimenting here to see where I might want that stripe of color to fall on the piece. And once I've determined where I want it to go, I'm gonna take out my trusty glue stick again and adhere it to the surface of the photo. This little stripe of color gives this piece intention, in my opinion, meaning that it's not just this beautiful picture that's on a wall, there's actually some art that's added to make it pop a little bit more than usual. After placing the mat over our piece, decided that I needed to trim a little bit off of that left-hand side. But hey, I really like using mats because it really is quite forgiving. You, the piece itself doesn't have to be perfect as long as it can fit behind the mat. And here's our final result. This looks very modern, very chic, and again, it was so inexpensive to do. And I can see a row of these, again, maybe using the same photo book and maybe with a slightly different color on each picture. I mean, that's just an option for you, but I absolutely love the way this turned out. The Pottery Barn inspiration for this piece kind of reminded me of decorative paper or wallpaper. And I remember that at the Dollar Tree, they actually have quite a nice selection of these different kinds of contact paper that have these beautiful graphics on them. So I'm just going to loosely trace out the section that we're going to cut out from our contact paper roll using that cardstock as a guide. And I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to cut out that shape and then we're going to attach it directly to the mat of the frame and before you know it we are going to be done with this very simple and easy project and here's our final result. Other ideas besides contact paper would be wallpaper, wrapping paper, decorative paper, origami paper. I mean, there are so many options when you think of the kind of paper that you could turn into beautiful wall art. 
I love the silhouettes in this Pottery Barn inspiration that's going for $249 on the website. I didn't have the exact color scheme ready to go in the craft sash that I had, so I decided to change up the color scheme a little bit, but really kind of honor that same tradition of these silhouetted shapes that form this landscape. And though the Pottery Barn print is actually a print of a painting, I decided that I would go with a collage instead. And so I have yellow cardstock that will act as the background for our piece. And I also have um, taken out or ripped out a few pages of this beautiful textured cardstock kind of paper uh, in my paper pack. So I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and to kind of cut a jagged diagonal shape down each of those cardstock pieces. And by the way, I would love to know in a comment down below which of these wall art projects is your favorite today. And now we're just going to glue each of these pieces to our yellow cardstock. Now, you may have noticed that the color scheme, again, is very, very different from the original Pottery Barn piece, but I wanted to use papers that were already a part of my stash, so I didn't have to buy anything new, and I was kind of interested in making this piece a little bit more youthful and maybe a little bit more vibrant than the original, and so the papers that I had on hand, I think, really lend to this bright and youthful kind of theme, and I'm just going to write out the word dream in a white paint pen. And after assembling everything in the frame, here's our final result. You know, I'm really digging the color scheme for this piece. I love these bright, saturated colors, and I love the pattern on the paper as well. I think it really all comes together for a really high-end but affordable piece of art. My Pottery Barn inspiration for this project was definitely painted, but I promised that I wouldn't do any painting for this video, so I wanted to seek out another alternative, and that alternative happened to be these free paint chips or paint samples from the hardware store. I love that these sample cards each has a number, and so if you're really feeling kind of lost and don't know where to start with color, or don't know how to mix colors together for this project, you might just want to pick a section that you're naturally drawn to and look for those sequential numbers, and that could be your color palette for this project. On our cardstock backing, I decided to draw out a grid, so that would make it a lot easier for me to line up those pieces and glue them down to the cardstock. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this glue stick like I've been using before for our projects today. And I'm going to run a little bit of that glue onto the cardstock and then carefully place each of those paint sample or paint chips onto the cardstock. After gluing down that first piece, we're going to continue gluing down the other pieces, traveling up the cardstock as we go. Now I'm carefully putting them down, making sure that each card covers the writing in the card beneath it. Now that's just my preference for this project, but I can see how you might want to actually leave the writing on the paint samples exposed. That could make it kind of fun. After we have all of our pieces layered and glued on, we're going to attach it to the inside of that mat in our frame, and here's our final result. Now the original Pottery Barn version of this piece had these long, painted, almost watercolory kind of strokes. My version is a lot more geometric, and even though they're different that way, I still think that they tell a similar color story, and this is a great way to add color to any space in your house. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. And we will see you next time.